In today's video, we're checking out the Blackstar ID Core Stereo 40 Version 3 Digital Modeling Amplifier. I've had about 100 requests to review one of these, so a massive thank you to Sky Music, my local music shop, for the loan of this. I don't get to keep it, nor are they paying me to make this video. All thoughts about this will be my own at the end. And what I'm gonna do is start off with a jam track using some of the onboard presets. It's pretty musical if you're into higher gain tones especially. Let's get into it. Here's the Blackstar ID Core Stereo 40 version 3 up close. Now, the cool thing about this is it's a stereo amplifier. So there's two speakers behind this really cool grill cloth. On the back, we get this cool finger grooved handle. <laughs> so your fingers actually slot in nicely under here. We also get a port here for our included AC power supply. Here's the amplifier up close. Now, the great thing about this amplifier is it allows you to either use the presets that are built into it, or of course you can make your own and store them accordingly. We get all these great presets thanks to this dial over here, everywhere from clean all the way through to metal, and I'll showcase that in the video. Included we get a gain and volume control. This volume control is our master output volume. So if you wanna turn the amp down in the room, just simply move this down. The ISF or EQ control here allows you to get a blend anywhere between hard left, which is that typical American style voicing, all the way to the right, which gives us that British voicing and a pushed mid frequency sound. The great thing is you can kind of customize this to your ear. Wherever you like this, you can just leave it and that's how it'll sound. It's pretty wild. The effects type and level correspond to each of these three buttons. So if you want to add a delay, you can then change between different delays that are built in using this control over here. And then you can set an overall level of that effect. This is kind of like the mix control. So if you turn it down this way, you'll hear less of it. If you turn it up this way, you'll hear more of it. Now, if we switch over to say the modulation, the same thing is true. So if we wanna switch between different effects like tremolo or phaser, we can use this control here. Now, if you're playing to a backing track and you wanna tap tempo the delay, for example, to repeat on time, you can use this onboard tap tempo delay button. We also have the ability to use this amplifier with an external foot switch, which isn't included with the amplifier. If you wanna do some late night practice or if you wanna run this directly into an audio interface, you can use this cab rig and phones output over here. The line in is a 3.5 millimeter TRS cable. So if you've got an audio device that supports that, you can plug in music and jam along. Now, if you want to fully customize this amplifier and get the most out of it, there's also a USB port on the top of the amplifier. You can then hook it up to a computer and use Blackstar's free deep editing software, and it'll give you full customizability over this amp. I've had so many requests over the years to review one of these ID Core amplifiers from Blackstar. So again, a massive thank you to Sky Music for the loan of this. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it down in the description box below. You can check it out in your part of the world. This thing right here is great if you're into those heavier tones. And there's a few things that you need to know about it if you're thinking about getting into it. And I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Here we go. All right, let's kick it off and play my PRS SE Custom 24. This is loaded with two humbucker pickups. I've got the amp mic'd up with a Sennheiser E906. And we're gonna go through each of the built-in presets. So out of the box, this amplifier comes with a whole bunch of usable presets. You can then customize them accordingly. We're gonna start on this top one over here called OD2, which is actually the tight metal rhythm with some room reverb. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's a great starting tone. Now, if we turn this EQ controller ISF to the left, we're gonna get a rounder American sort of sound. With it to the opposite side, we get more of a British tone with a bit more pushed mids, and I'll show you that now. Here we go. So you can scoop your sound nice and simply just by using that ISF EQ control. Stored into Overdrive 1, we have a great lead tone called Smooth Solo. It has multiple delay and plate reverb. So great if you want to sort of rock out with some lead. Here we go. So you can definitely hear a huge difference in the mids and overall warmth by putting the ISF to the right. Starting to the Super Crunch setting, we have one called Modern Drive. This also has some analog delay. You can use this for both lead or rhythm guitar stuff. It's up to you. All right, now with the EQ to the left. I can hear the speaker or the cabinet struggling a little bit with that all the way to the left. So for this, I would recommend probably having it more to the left-hand side. Here we go. Yeah, I think if you push too much low frequencies through these little speakers, it can get a little bit on the woofy side, but yeah, it is what it is. Just use the EQ to the left if it does sound a little bit like the speakers are maxing out. This next one's called Classic Crunch and it has some phaser and hall reverb already assigned. Here we go. Now, if we want more or less of the effect, we can turn this control over here. So if we turn it all the way off, dead dry, right? So we can just globally turn it up by using this control. Cool. Up next is one of the clean channels. We've got one called Boutique Clean with some spring reverb. We'll go to neck pickup for this. All right, and over to the first clean channel, which is called Classic Clean with some plate reverb. Now you can, of course, still use the ISF if you want to change the, the voicing of it. My wallet keeps blocking the whammy bar. <laughs> 
And now with the amplifier in manual mode, I'm on this super crunch setting and I've dimed the gain all the way up. The volume's at about 12 o'clock and the ISF is to the left. We're gonna add some effects manually now. Let's have a listen to this first, this is a bridge. <laughs> Great starting tone. Let's add a little bit of reverb, hold this down. Let's have a listen to this. I think that sounds pretty great. Now with some delay as well. We'll just go from wherever it's at here. Yeah, nice little analog delay trail there. You can customize this amplifier to no end just by using the parameters on the top, or of course, if you hook it up to a computer, we get full flexibility over it. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of the Blackstar Stereo 40 version three digital modeling amplifier. So this thing has surprised me to no end. Just before shooting this, I actually reviewed the Fender Mustang LT50. And there's some stuff about this that I really like, including its overall functionality. Straight out of the box, the presets that Blackstar have put in here are exceptional. And I like the fact that you can customize it in manual mode just by using the amplifier dials a lot easier than having to do menu diving like on other amplifiers, like that Mustang, for example. So overall, they got this right in terms of its functionality. One thing I would have loved to have seen on here is a dedicated two band EQ. I think that would have made it perfect, even if it was just bass and treble. Now the ISF or EQ control does kind of do that to some extent, but not enough. To get more treble out of it, for example, I will need to hook it up to a computer to do that. Not the end of the world, but once you get the presets that you like, you can store them and save them in here and you're done. You never have to use the computer again. As a home practice amplifier, it does cleans okay, but where it really shines is when it comes to those crunch, lead, and heavy sort of metal tones. That's where this really shines. So if you're into more higher gain tones, this amplifier is a no-brainer. I really like the reverb and delay effects as well. Very musical to my ear, and you can dial them in just by using this little level control as I showed you throughout the video. So if you just want to turn them up or down, you can do that. But it's a great little amplifier. Now, the one thing I did notice is if I have the ISF too far to the right and the volume and gain too high, the speakers do kind of bottom out a little bit. So just be cautious of that. But it's not gonna damage the speakers, it just won't sound super clear. Odds are you heard a little bit of that on this video, but I think this is a great little amplifier. It's completely surprised me. And lastly, there's this cool little carry handle on the back, so if you wanna move it around, it makes it easy to put it into place. I did find it sounded better up off the floor than on the floor at my house. So just keep that in mind as well. If you're gonna be putting it on a desk or you know, on a table, whatever the case may be, I think that's where you'll get sort of like a clearer low end bass response, but that's why I bought out this little black table after I shot the intro track. But yeah, overall, great little amplifier. Let us know what you think. If you want to check it out, I'll link it to everywhere down in the description below. Catch you soon. See ya.